Okay. Welcome to Keep Accounting Unit 2, Paper 2, Module 2, 2018. It's prepared and presented by Mr. James. Okay, today's question is based on traditional costings and the first part is up on the screen here. Last boy limited manufactures a product using resources from two departments, X and Y. Overhead is applied in each department to reflect the characteristics of the department. Department X has a large contingent of employees who are responsible for the first stage of production, which is labor intensive. Okay, so there's our first bit of information. Department X has a large contingent of employees who are responsible for the first production, which is labor intensive. And department Y is predominantly automated and is heavily dependent on machines to complete the thing. So department Y is machine intensive. The following additional information is available. Uh, we are given the direct course. This would include the raw materials, the labor, sorry, this does not include the raw materials. It's just the direct labor costs. So what we have here is four, three bases that we could use for um, our PUHR. Okay, the accounting records of the company show the following data for job 748. Direct materials, direct labor costs, and machine hours. So this is for job 748. And we are asked first to compute the predetermined factory overhead rate for each department. Okay, so you have two departments, so we calculate in two PUHR. All right. All right, we noted that department X was labor intensive. So we'll choose labor costs as the basis of apportionment. So the POHR would be 900,000 divided by 600,000. Um, where we got those figures from? The 900,000 is taken from here and the 600,000 from here. Okay. And we get 1.5 per labor cost. Department Y is heavily automated, so we will choose machine hours for as the basis of the apportionment. So POHR would be 660 divided by 80,000. We get 8.25 again, 
the data is taken from here. 660 divided by 80 machine hours. So we have here 660 divided by 80 equal 825. Okay. The next part of the question asks to calculate the total overhead cost for job 748. In order to do this part, we have to take part of the answers from part E. Okay. A portion in the overhead for department X will get 14,000 multiplied by 1.5 which is $1.50 which is the PUHR and we'll get 21,000. Now the 14,000 is coming from here. Okay, remember we use direct labor costs here as the PUHR as the base for the PUHR. So we multiply that, we get 21,000. And apportioning the department Y, 6,000 by 825. The 825 comes from what we calculated here. And the 6,000 from over here, machine hours. Okay, so we get 49,500. And when we add these two, we'll get the total overhead for job 748. Okay. Next part of the question asks us to determine the unit cost of job 748, which consists of 200 units of product. All right. To get the unit cost, you'll have to calculate the total cost first, and then divide it by the number of units. Right, we have it here. Direct materials, 13,000 plus 21,000 gives us 151,000. The 13,000 comes from job 748, direct materials, Okay, so it should be 130,000 
plus 21,000. So I have a typo there. Okay, this should be, uh, this is a typo, it should be 130,000 plus 21,000 give us the 151,000. The direct labor because these are taken from the data would be 100, sorry, 14,000 plus 6 so we have 14,000 plus 6,000 equal 20,000, okay? And the total overhead apply, we calculated it previously. Here, it comes from here, our total overhead when we work part B and we put it in here. Okay, so the total cost of the job would be when we add these three items here. The raw materials, the labor and the overhead applied. We add the three and we get two out of 41,000. To find the unit cost of the job, we take the 241,000 from here, and we divide it by the 200 units that we are told they made, and we will get 1,207 dollars and 50 cents per unit okay where we got the 200 from 200 is taken from here okay we have another part to the question See, Lasmoy Limited actual cost for manufacturing the product and the selling price of the product as follows. So we are given the selling price, direct materials, indirect materials, all variable, direct labor, indirect labor, all variable, uh, factory overhead 60% variable, administrative and selling percent, 80% fix right now there was some confusion over this year if the if these are indirect costs they're not supposed to be variable in the right otherwise if they are variable they should be up here in this direct material but anyway, we work the problem as we are given it. Okay? So in 2016, all units produced were sold. In 2017, the plan level of production was 80,000 units. However, actual production was 70,000 units, of which 65,000 units were sold. So you have... 5,000 in your closing stock. Calculate the per unit value of closing inventory using marginal costing first, and then absorption costing. Okay. So, to get the marginal costing per unit of closing inventory. We take the per unit cost of all the items that make up the inventory. It would be the direct materials, 
these figures we are given at the the t comes from here. And for the indirect material, we take the total cost and we divide it by the number of units produced. And we get 640,000 divided by 70,000 gives us 6,000. Six dollars, sorry. Okay, and those figures are coming from here. We have the 420, right? And the 70,000 units that was produced. The direct labor is given as 25. So, That, sorry about that. The 25 comes from here. The in. Indirect labor, we are given a total of 364. And the 70,000 units we divided, we'll get 520. Okay, let me just show you where that came from. The 364 is given here. And again, the 70 is over here, right? Okay, doesn't want to come off. All right, variable factory overhead, 560,000 by 60%. Uh, and then we divide it by the 70,000 units. So where we get these figures from? It's here, right? Factory overhead, 60% variable, 560. So we only want the variable portion for the marginal costing. And then we divide it by the 70,000 units from here again. Okay, and we get 480. All right. So what we need to note here is that um, the all the variable costs is taken up only, right? Variable cost equals marginal cost. And we add down these, we'll get $70 as the cost per unit, All right? Now we could have done this by adding the indirect materials and the indirect labor and dividing it by 70000 You'd still you get your indirect costs per unit and then add up all three together. Okay, the absorption cost per unit of closing inventory. We take the marginal cost and the fixed cost for absorption costing, right? We have already calculated the marble marginal cost there, so we don't need to go back and calculate it. And uh, that will be the 70 that we just calculated here. I'll just flip back and show you that, this here. And we add on the fixed overhead, right? 560 by 40% it would be this time. And then divided by 70,000 units, we'll get 320. So the total absorption cost per unit is $73.20. Right, let me just show you where this 40% came from. Mm -hmm. 
and the data here, we have it as 560,000. 60% is variable, therefore 40% would be fixed. So to work out the fixed per unit will be this total divided by, multiply by 40% and then divided by the 70,000 units that we have here. Okay, after we work out the unit cost, now when you're doing an absorption costing or a marginal costing income statement, it is always wise to work out the unit cost of the closing stock first, right? For absorption costing and for marginal costing. Okay, so we had up this, we were not given any date, right? The sales, 65,000 was sold at $90, we get 58.50. And your production costs, we didn't have any opening stock. The manufacturing costs would be 70,000 multiply by 7320 per unit we got the 7320 here right per unit and the 70000 is the amount that was produced okay so that's how we get that up here uh Manufacturing costs, okay, just give me a second here. Right, the closing inventory would be the 5,000 that was not sold, multiply by the unit cost gives us 366,000. Right, let me show you how we get the 5,000 again. And the data here, we have that 70,000 was produced and 65,000 was sold. So you have 5,000, right? Um, all was sold, so you have no opening stock in 2016. Okay, all produce was sold. All right, so we minus the closing inventory value, now we get the production cost of goods sold. And Take them away, we get the gross margin. Less the selling and admin total, and we get net income of 42,000. Okay, let's um, see where we got the selling and admin from. Okay, selling an admin here, 1,050. 1 million and 50 rather. So that comes in here, and we take that from the gross margin or the gross profit, and we get the net income of 42,000. And that brings us to the end of the presentation.